Hello, good morning. I'm Dr. Yap Boon Tat. I'm a senior anesthesiologist from the Faculty of Medicine and Health Sciences, University of Malaysia, Sabah. Today, I'm going to present to you regarding general anesthesia for lower segment cesarean section. This is, will be the fourth and final topic for today. I hope all of you will enjoy my session. Now, the indications for GA or general anesthesia for lower segment cesarean section are the urgency of the emergency, such as the eclampsia, preeclampsia, fetal bradycardia, obstetrics, hemorrhage, maternal refusal for subarachnoid block, inadequate or failed spinal anesthesia or SAB, coagulopathies and spinal deformities. There are many issues regarding general anesthesia for obstetric patients. They are difficult back valve mass, difficult intubation, difficult ventilation, risk of intraoperative awareness, risk of aspiration pneumonitis or ARDS, risk of hypoxemia and desaturation, aortocarval obstruction and hypotension, uterine atony because of the effect of the anesthetic inhalational agents, fetal respiratory depression because of opioids, risk of deep vein thrombosis, poor post-operative pain control, and very high perioperative morbidity and mortality. Preoperatively, as per regional anesthesia, we must ensure what are the indications for lower segment cesarean section, perform adequate history taking and appropriate airway and spine assessments as well, and must include the latest hematological data such as the hemoglobin and the platelet levels. The patient must have at least a cross match of blood products such as the PAC cells or a DIVC should it be needed. Informed consent must be obtained from the patient and anti-aspiration prophylaxis such as ranitidine, maxalon and oral sodium citrate of around 30 ml must be given to the patient approximately 15 minutes before sending the patient to the operating theater. Most importantly, the patient must have a functioning IV line, large bore of around 18 or 16 gauge for us to resuscitate the patient. And then intraoperatively, we must have at least the monitoring such as the electrocardiograph to record the heart rate the NIBP for the blood pressure monitoring, pulse oximetry and the capnography for the patient, prepare adequate endotracheal tubes and the video laryngoscope because of difficult intubation, perform the check on the mask, okay, the laryngeal tube, the endotracheal tube, suction catheter must be available and the airway adjuncts. After that, when the patient is supine, perform adequate pre-oxygenation for at least 3 to 5 minutes so that the entire lungs contain oxygen and denitrogenation. Position the patient in a left lateral tilt when this pre-oxygenation being undertaken and consider the positive pressure ventilation if the patient is desaturating. We can perform a ramp up position for obese or a pregnant lady in this case so that the tragus and the suprasternal notch are in one line which will mean that the larynx are straight and easier for us to intubate and to avoid difficult intubation and ventilation. Okay, In rapid sequence induction is usually being applied to a patient who are either an elective or an emergency uh, lower segment cesarean section for GA, which includes intravenous propofol 2 mg per kW or thiopentol. Muscle relaxant of choice is usually saxamethonium of 1.5 mg per kilo, and usually we avoid usage of fentanyl because of fetal apnea and poor APGAR score. After the rapid administration of these drugs, we should have a assistant to perform a tricot pressure of 30 newtons. Okay. 
onto the cricoid cartilage to avoid aspiration pneumonitis and rapidly after around 45 seconds we intubate with a cupped endotracheal tube with the help of the video laryngoscope and then we confirm the placement of the endotracheal tube with the stethoscope by auscultating the lungs okay the back base and the apex intraoperatively as previously mentioned in ra we give antibiotics prophylaxis and then adequate analgesia with uh, IV fentanyl of uh, uh, morphine after the baby is out. Consider IV paracetamol and NSAIDs if there is no contraindication to the mother. If pitos, once the baby has been out, we give pitocin 5 units okay, to encourage uterine contraction to prevent uterine atony. And you may consider infusion of the pitocin if the uterus is not contracting well. And usually we must extubate the patient fully awake so that the patient can protect her airway to avoid aspiration. We should put the patient in left lateral position if it is needed to avoid aspiration and we reverse with IV sugar medics if the maintenance of muscle relaxant intraoperatively is with the usage of rocuronium. If it is not, the conventional Usage of new state mean and atropine is sufficient. Postoperatively, if it is needed, we may consider to admit the patient to the intensive care unit. If not, then we should monitor the patient's vital signs such as BP, heart rate, and the oxygen saturation. Ensure the mother is covered with good postoperative analgesia. Usually, we can consider giving paracetamol or paracoxid or patient control analgesia PCA, DVT or deep vein thrombosis thromboprophylaxis with the stockinets or early mobilizations are encouraged. Allow sips of clear fluids after the patient is fully conscious in the ward. With this, I would like to thank all of you for your attention and time for this chapter of my presentation.